once this fmr is scrapped there will be a border fencing and this is going to affect families and tribes Berin Sin, the chief minister of manipur cannot dictate the policy of northeast and it's uh, unbelievable that the indian government is uh, taking Berin Sin's, uh, policy at face value by creating uh, by making a fencing again it will hurt the sentiments of the Naga people and it will lead to conflict. The government of India should be very wise, should exercise their wisdom, its wisdom, and ensure that the fragile peace which is in place in Nagaland shouldn't be shattered because of Berenice's policy. The Rising People's Party recently said that the government of India's announcement to end the free movement regime should serve as a wake-up call for the Naga people. And they also urged the NDPP BJP coalition government here in the state to strongly oppose the proposal to scrap the FMR. To discuss further on this, I am now being joined by Mr. Joel Naga, the president of the Rising People's Party. Thank you, sir, for joining us. Uh, there has not been yet any official statement to scrap the FMR from the government. Why do you think they're not, they're not making it clear about their policy, sir? Well, I cannot speak for the government of India. But uh, probably they know that this is a dangerous move in hindsight because if the government of India goes ahead with this policy to scrap FMR, then uh, as far as Nagaland is concerned, it will shatter the peace, the fragile peace which is already in place since 1997 because this is a very emotional issue and it has to do with two peoples living in Burma and India. The Nagas live in Burma as in India. And uh, probably the Indian government is wary about this fact. Okay. The FMR is only eight years old as uh, revived by the present government. Why do you think the government is backtracking on it so early? See, uh, <clears throat> Biren Singh, the chief minister of Manipur, has been very vocal about scrapping FMR. In fact, he raised this issue in 2022. 23, if I'm not mistaken, or 22. Now, Berenstein, the chief minister of Manipur, cannot dictate the policy of Northeast. And it's uh, unbelievable that the Indian government is uh, taking Berenstein's uh, policy at face value. Uh, the Indian government should understand that FMR, yes, was formalized in 2016. So it formalized the free movement of people through FMR. That we understand. But we should also understand that uh, there has been free movement of peoples between the borders since statehood, since Nagaland was created in 1963. And for that matter, even in Mizoram and Manipur. So, yes, the Modi government formalized it. But the fact of the matter remains that Berenstein has been very vocal against FMR. And uh, as I have stated he going to dictate the policy for Northeast. The, the, the government has blamed the violence in Manipur as one of the uh, key factors uh, you know, for scrapping this. Then should Nagaland, Mizoram and Arunachal Pradesh be paying the price for this? Absolutely not. Berin Singh, he would have uh, put his house in order in the first place when the violence first broke out and even before the violence. It's because of his communal policies that this has happened. He dehumanized the cookies as uh, illegal immigrants and opium and drug dealers. In fact, he dehumanized, dehumanized the whole cookie, Zo, Zo cookie people. And this is the reason why violence has been continuing in, continuing in Manipur even for, uh, uh, for eight months. And uh, because, as we have put out in our press release, because, because of his incompetence, these things, these things have happened. And therefore... The government of India should be very wise, should exercise their wisdom, its wisdom, and ensure that the fragile peace which is in place in Nagaland shouldn't be shattered because of Berenice's policy. So can you, can you tell us uh, how the FMR has helped people on both sides of the border? And if India has to improve relations with Myanmar, don't you think FMR is something you know, to go forward with? Yeah, exactly. India is looking at uh, ACUS policy. And and the ACUS policy is, is going to be very important for India as well as for Nordis, for the Nordisian states. 
That's one point. Secondly, we have families living across the border in, in Burma. For example, the Konyaks, the Kumangans, the Pochuris. They have families and relatives and clans and tribesmen living across the border in Burma. And they have been co-mingling with each other for the last 60, 70 years. And there has been free exchange of movement across the border. In fact, the, the Nagaland government has, uh, you know, identified three border areas. One is Longwa, one is uh, Avanku, and I think one is Pangsha, where, you know, uh, trade can be carried out with, uh, with, with Burma. So we have one million Naga people living in, in Myanmar, Burma. So if there's a border fencing, this is going to be affected. Obviously, families are going to be torn apart permanently. So when we talk about the Naga areas in Burma, we have to understand that there are one million Nagas in Burma. There's a Naga self-administered zone in Burma. And below that, there's a Somra area inhabited by Tangkul Nagas in a bordering Okuru. So the, along the whole stretch of Burmi, uh, sorry, Manipur and Nagaland border till Mizoram. And below the Somra tr- track is the Chin area. So the Chins are closer really with the Mizos. So the whole area from Nagaland to Manipur to Mizoram is, you know, inhabited by these independent tribes. Rather, was, rather in the British days, they were called independent tribes because the Burmese king of Ava had no control over these areas. And if you understand, during the British times, the Eastern Nagaland, Eastern Nagaland, that is this side of the border, Patkai Range, uh, the, even the British had no control over these areas and they were, they were called as a free Nagas. So since time immemorial, there has been, you know, like, uh, uh, you know, uh, there have been the Naga tribes in Burma and India, they have been, you know, living together, you know, they have been co-mingling, co-mingling, co-mingling together and then they have been carrying out trades with each other, trade with each other. Now, this, as I stated before, this was formalized through FNR, through FMR. In 2016, as you put it. I thought it was 2018. Anyway, so now why should the Modi government backtrack? This is a question which I want to ask the Indian government. Why should they backtrack? Because Berenzin said so. No, this is not acceptable. Do you think border fencing is a feasible solution? Given that we have been trying to fence the India-Bangladesh border for years now, for a very long time, but that has seemingly not stopped the illegal immigration problem. It has not. You are right. Uh, in fact, there are more illegal immigrants <clears throat> right now than it was before. And in fact, <clears throat> Ill- illegal immigration is happening every day uh, in the along the India-Bangladesh border. Now we have to understand that these illegal immigrants from Bangladesh they have no re- they, they had no relatives in, in India before. And however, over the years, in the last 50, 60 years. They have been crossing the border and then they have been populated in the uh, northeastern states. And in fact, you can find Bangladeshi immigrants everywhere, even in Delhi, Hyderabad, Kerala, everywhere. Now, by fencing the northeastern borders, it's not going to solve uh, the problem of illegal immigration. Now, why I'm saying this? See, when we talk about illegal immigration, there are hardly any illegal immigrants from Burma in Nagaland. Yes, because of the conflict in Myanmar, the Chin people, they have come to Mizoram as refugees. So there's a difference between refugees and illegal immigrants. These refugees will go back. Now, as far as Manipur is concerned, I really don't know. Berenzin and his uh, government are saying that is the illegal immigrants in Manipur are causing all the problems. Now, that I really don't know. That, and I don't subscribe to that. He's, ter- he's talking in terms of lacks, and which is certainly not possible. If you look at Manipur history, from the, se- from the 18th century, they have been serving the Manipuri kings, the Kukis, as you know, irregular soldiers and militias. So all of a sudden in the 21st century, you know, branding Kukis as, you know, wholesale illegal immigrants, it's not, you know, like it's not viable. Now, what I'm trying to say is, this border, this uh, fencing, this proposed fencing should be stopped. Because 
it will tear families apart. And this is a boundary which we don't recognize. That's an important thing. Yes, there's a boundary. The Patkai Range is a watershed dividing uh, Burma and India. And this is the doing of the British. But Naga, as a, we Nagas as a people, we don't recognize this boundary. And the Indian government should, you know, respect this sentiment. So by creating, uh, by making a fencing, again, it will hurt the sentiments of the Naga people. And it will, it will, you know, like it will lead to conflict and peace will be shattered. We are talking, the Indian government is talking about, the Modi government in particular is talking about one nation, one people. But on the other hand, they are talking about fencing the region. So these are, you know, contradictory statements and this is, this is not going to help peace in the region. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you for, thank you for speaking to East Mojo. Welcome. Most welcome, yeah. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to East Mojo. For any queries, put them down in the comments section below and press on the bell icon for notifications.